Survival horror is a subgenre of video games folding ideas of traditional horror fiction into a survival style gameplay. The horror is usually injected through a use of atmospheric elements and creating a tense or unsettling ambiance, often involving a sense of isolation and claustrophobia. The NPCs are usually limited and story elements are brought on secondhand by finding journals, documents, or audio logs. But horror graphics and even jump scares definitely play a role in achieving the genre successfully. Game mechanics tend to involve puzzle solving, enemy evasion, and inventory management as well as balancing a supply of limited resources. It's a stark contrast to most games where taking the offensive is preferable. These games aim to make the player feel vulnerable and using brute force is often never an option for success. It's a genre that has stood the test of time growing and progressing since the late 80s, establishing many giant brands in gaming and even inspiring elements that bleed into other genres of gaming. As it is Spooktober, I thought what better way to celebrate the month of spooks better than seeing where it all started. So let's jump in to the brief history of survival horror. The foundation for survival horror is laid out far before the time of video games. Horror fiction is something people have enjoyed for centuries. Specific archetypes of survival horror can be drawn out from history. However, H.P. Lovecraft is an obvious inspiration for not only the atmosphere of the genre, but for the great old ones being used as inspiration for enemies and bosses laid out in the games. Unknown dark forces that seem to have power over humanity and consciousness as a concept is reflected into almost every game of the genre. Slasher films inspire the tension of the ultimate antagonist the sense that something is always there, and when it decides to confront you, fighting it is often not the smartest idea. Japanese horror both in literature and film is a giant component when it comes to psychological horror elements in the genre, but western horror is used almost as heavily with a more visceral and action intense philosophy. The film Alien is actually the inspiration behind the first game made to be retrospectively considered survival horror. The history of survival horror games starts loosely with a title called Nostromo for the Commodore PET 2001. Made by a Tokyo University student, it was released in 1981. As stated earlier, it took inspiration from the film Alien, and the concept of the game involved escaping a spaceship without being spotted by an alien roaming around the ship. It involved limited resources and required players to collect certain items in order to exit the ship. Other titles emerged that roughly started to form an idea of the genre. 1982 gave us Haunted House for the Atari 2600, a game that focused on puzzle solving and evasion when threats came. On the Sinclair ZX81, 3D Monster Maze by Malcolm Evans raised the bar in defining tension. The player must navigate a maze and find the exit before the monster, a T-Rex, finds him. It is a first person game, there is no weapons, there is no way to fight, you just run as the game states what the T-Rex's status is. Rex lies in wait. He's hunting for you. Rex has seen you! Run! Oh god, he's beside you! Run! He's right behind you! Definitely an influence in tension building for the genre to come, horror themed games continued to be released but it wasn't until 1989 that survival horror was a perceptible genre in gaming. In 1989, Capcom released the title Sweet Home for the Famicom, an RPG based on the Japanese horror film of the same name. The game tells the story of a group of filmmakers making their way to a mansion to find hidden pieces of art, and as they explore this mansion they are attacked by ghosts and other supernatural beings. The player must navigate this home, battling these enemies while also trying to keep their team alive and balance a finite amount of resources such as weapons and health replenishment items. It was gaming's first attempt at creating a horror storyline in a game. It was achieved using scattered diary entries that the player can find that were written 50 years before the events that take place in the game. Capcom, as you may know, are pioneers to the survival horror genre and Sweet Home is considered by most to be the first title of the genre, only to be built on from its release. In 1992, Infogrames, now known as Atari, released a title called Alone in the Dark for the PC. Nearly as influential as Sweet Home, Alone in the Dark introduced many iconic elements to the genre. The game revolves around a lone 
protagonists against an onslaught of various enemies. It incorporated many adventure game tropes such as puzzle solving and the use of finding keys to advance further in the game. Alone in the Dark used static pre-rendered scenes to portray the game, usually at a cinematic and unique angle depending on the scene. Enemies could be fought but options to block or evade them were available and as many enemies couldn't even be killed if fought, the use of these problem solving skills and quick thinking were needed to advance through the game. Narrative was also told through scattered notes and books that the player has the option to interact with, many factors of survival horror games that we know and love today. In 1994, River Hill Soft released a title called Dr. Hauser for the 3DO. This game was unique in that it had no enemies. The only obstacle the player faced was the evil house that the player had to navigate in the story while collecting items and solving puzzles. It was a very similar game graphically to Alone in the Dark, differentiating itself by having 3D environments rather than pre-rendered scenes. The game highlights this by allowing the camera to switch from first to third person perspectives, as well as giving a top-down view to get through the puzzles that the house had. Another huge aspect that this game brought to the table was ambient noise. Even the player's footsteps noise would change depending on what kind of surface they're stepping on. This kind of noise just enhanced the atmosphere of the game and created a staple for the genre to come. In 1995, a developer named Warp released a title called D. This game is an FMV game that has the player control the main character, Laura, through a full CGI movie while solving puzzles. The game is very psychological horror heavy and has aggressive themes such as cannibalism and mass murder portrayed within it. The game also must be beaten in two hours or less and has no save or pause function, creating a fourth wall breaking idea of tension to the player. 1995 also gave us Clock Tower by Human Entertainment, a game that brought stealth mechanics into the mix of the genre. It was a point and click game that had the player running from a stalker named Scissor Man throughout the game. The game was non-combative and focused on hiding and outsmarting Scissor Man. Also depending on how you play through different sequences in the game, it has up to nine different endings. These games most certainly do not come to mind to most people when discussing survival horror, but there's no denying the influence that these games had on the genre, truly defining and molding the ideas used in games in the next generations. Whether it's storytelling through scattered diaries or a focus on item management in Sweet Home, the emphasis of evasion and puzzle solving in Alone in the Dark, dynamic atmosphere shown in Dr. Hauser, grueling tension and horrific imagery in D, or the idea of stealth in multiple ways to play through a situation having a lasting effect on the story and clock tower. There is no denying that these games are the pillars of the genre, which bring us to 1996, where the game that coined the phrase survival horror was released. The year is 1996. Capcom decides it's time for a sequel to their innovative title, Sweet Home. They took its mansion setting, puzzle solving gameplay, narratives that change based on which characters live or die, and advanced its storyline tremendously. They also took heavily from Atari's Alone in the Dark graphically, using pre-rendered scenes with fixed cinematic camera angles to guide the game. The game they ended up with was a little title called Resident Evil. Resident Evil literally defined the genre of survival horror. They used the term for the first time in the marketing of the game. The tent controls implemented in the game became the staple for future titles, and the advanced Advanced inventory management and limited availability of resources is something that games tried to imitate for decades. Resident Evil was a landmark title. It's even credited with propelling the PlayStation into the monster console that it's known as today. Every game of the genre has clear inspiration from this one title, whether they admit it or not. Truly one of the most influential games of all time, it propelled the genre into the golden age where some of gaming's best titles were released under the survival horror umbrella, most referred to as Resident Evil clones similar to how many games are given the Dark Souls clones or Souls-like moniker. Several titles stood out in this time period. 1996 also gave us Clock Tower, a PlayStation sequel to the title of the same name mentioned earlier. It maintained its brand as a story-rich point-and-click adventure title using stealth and player inputs changing narratives to form a unique experience. The game definitely capitalized on the success of Resident Evil but maintains its own identity in the wave of survival horror. 1996 also gave us an RPG Maker game Game titled Corpse Party, a psychological horror adventure game where the player had no means to defend themselves and the story offered up to 20 different endings depending on the choices of the player. River Hill Soft jumped back into the genre with Overblood in 96 as well. Overblood is considered the first survival horror title to take use of a full 3D virtual environment, taking notes from his past title Dr. Hauser. 
The Note in 1997 and Hell Knight in 1998 each took the first person approach to 3D virtual environments, Hell Knight being considered a modern take to the 3D monster maze, allowing for only evasion and no combat mechanics. In 1998, Capcom followed their triumphant title with Resident Evil 2. The developers wanted to turn a familiar setting into horror, so instead of a mansion that no one would visit, they decided to turn the whole town into chaos. Resident Evil 2 cemented the genre's endurance by selling 5 million copies. The year 1998 also saw the release of Square's Parasite Eve, which blended survival horror of Resident Evil with the RPG elements of Final Fantasy into a pinnacle title of the genre. Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within was released in 98 as well. Following loyally to the previous titles of the series, it maintained a strong independence, still riding the wave of success made by Capcom. There's some other titles that stand out from 1998, including Galerians, which gave the player use of psychic abilities instead of weapons, and the title Blue Stinger, which took elements from beat em up style games and brought that into survival horror. 1999 was perhaps the peak of survival horror's golden age, however. Konami's masterpiece Silent Hill was released, critically praised for being heavily focused on psychological horror over visceral imagery, using stealth and atmosphere as powerful tools to make it one of the most iconic titles in the genre. The same year, we also received Dino Crisis from Capcom. A slightly more action forward title, it still borrowed heavily from survival horror and has become a cult classic title. The following years were a slow decline of the genre. Silent Hill and Dino Crisis received their sequels, both as successful as the first titles. Fatal Frame, released in 2001, was one of the last titles in the Golden Age to become distinctive, tasking the player with photographing ghosts in a mansion to defeat them. It's known as one of the best written survival horror titles in history. Capcom explored more action-focused gameplay. Dino Crisis 2 is primarily considered an action title. Resident Evil 3 is the first step of the series into becoming known as horror shooters shooters rather than survival horror. In the year 2000, Resident Evil Code Veronica was released, bringing a dynamic camera and 3D environments into the series, still having strong focus on survival horror. 2002 gave us The Thing, another action title that strongly used survival horror elements. Western markets all began to trend towards action over survival when it came to horror, however. Some Japanese titles still tried to maintain the genre, Clock Tower 3 and Silent Hill 3 in 2002, and Siren and Silent Hill 4 in 2004 both are strict titles of survival horror, focusing a lot on stealth and enemy evasion tactics. However, the market began to criticize the limited resources and controls of the game like Silent Hill 4 and Resident Evil Code Veronica, so the golden age of true survival horror started to dwindle. After 2005, games of the genre focus much more on action gameplay. Not necessarily a bad thing, the games being released are all still considered top titles of the genre. Games like Resident Evil 4 brought aspects like having good reflex and precision aiming into play, keeping up with the trend of limited ammo being provided. Silent Hill Homecoming also followed the same trend of having a captivating gameplay overshadow the survival horror elements. In 2008, we even got a remake of the founding title Alone in the Dark, which focused its gameplay on action as well. Purists of the genre started to criticize these titles saying that they lost their way and were just appealing to trending markets, which I suppose isn't false, but that doesn't mean that these titles were bad. All these titles are great games, some even better games than what came out in the golden age. In 2005, we got the game Fear, a fantastic shooter game that had strong elements of tension and horror in its atmosphere. In 2008, Dead Space was released, another pivotal game in history that puts action first, but the survival horror elements underneath the shooting really solidifies the game in the ring where it is. Certain games still maintain the core belief of the genre. Fatal Frame's titles all followed the same formulas for success, same with Silent Hill's Shattered Memories. There is also no shortage of indie studios trying to recreate the feeling of the founding games of the genre. Games like Penumbra, Amnesia, Cry of Fear, and Slender all focused on the psychological horror and created the tension and atmosphere praised by fans of the genre without having needless action or gore in the game. Independent developers are perhaps the leading step in the genre at this point, and recent titles like Lost in Vivo recreate the ideals of the original games from over a decade ago perfectly. AAA games still try their hand at the genre these days, though games like The Evil Within, Alien Isolation, Until Dawn, and even Capcom keeping their horse in the race with Resident Evil 7 and the remake of Resident Evil 2, both games going away from the action and towards a more horror-focused affair. 
Survival horror is such an influential subgenre of games, whether it's the traditional adventure style game or a more action shooter take on it. The genre has defined and innovated such amazing characteristics seen in games of all genres. Humongous brands in gaming were founded under the idea of survival horror. Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Fear, Amnesia, all titles that took part in making the genre what it is and maintain the ideas as time went on. I hope you enjoyed this brief history. There are countless games that I missed for sure, but I hope that you learned something or at very least you were entertained with your time here. If you made it this far, I love you. If you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that button. It's free and it really helps me out. Also hit that like button while you're down there if you like it and please hit the dislike button if you didn't like it. I want to know what you guys want to see and there's no better way to let me know. Well, there's commenting. Leave a comment as well. Hope to see you next time. Peace.